I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Lenovo Legion 5 gaming laptop, including battery, RAM, storage, and Wi-Fi. I'll also run benchmark tests before and after the upgrades so we can get an idea of what the changes do in games and applications. These are the specs that my Legion 5 laptop had when I bought it. Unfortunately, the processor and graphics cannot be upgraded as these are soldered to the motherboard. The only way to change would be to swap the entire laptop. Pretty much everything else can be upgraded though. To open it up, simply remove 11 Phillips head screws. The four screws down the front are shorter than the rest, so keep that in mind when you're putting it back together at the end. I'm using pry tools from iFixit to get inside. Links to everything can be found in the description, but you could also use a credit card in a pinch. Once inside, we can see the 60 watt hour battery down the bottom and 2.5 inch drive space to the left of that. The Wi-Fi 6 card and included M.2 SSD are found underneath this piece of metal on the right. You need to remove three Phillips head screws to take it off, and these are smaller than the screws for opening the laptop, so you might need a smaller bit. There's a thermal pad by default for cooling the M.2 drive. The two memory slots are found underneath this square piece of metal. There aren't any screws holding it in. I just use my pry tools to lift up the corner a little, being careful not to damage the motherboard. Then lift the rest with my fingers. All right, so now that we've got access to everything, let's upgrade. With the 60 watt hour battery that my unit has installed, there's space towards the left down the front for a 2.5 inch SATA drive. This could be either a hard drive or SSD. This black piece of plastic mount holds the required SATA cable and four screws for drive mounting, so just remove it. The drive tray is held in with four screws. Again, like the metal plate above the Wi-Fi card and SSD, these are smaller. Once the four screws are removed, you can pull out the drive tray. The bottom right corner is stuck under the battery, so you also need to lift up the corner of the battery to remove the tray. With the tray removed, insert the 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD and screw it into the tray, using the four silver screws that were provided in the black piece of plastic. Next, you need to connect the included SATA cable to the motherboard. It connects here just below the left fan. There's a little plastic tab which needs to be lifted up in order for the cable to be inserted. The cable has a little blue tab which you can use to hold it and move it. Once the cable is inserted with the pin side face down, push the plastic tab down to lock the cable in place. Now simply connect the SATA cable to the drive and put the drive tray back in place and screw it in. Remembering that to get the bottom right corner in place you need to lift the battery slightly, like we did when removing it. With the 2.5 inch drive bay in place, it's not possible to use the second M.2 slot. It's one or the other. If you want to use the second M.2 slot, just take out the 2.5 inch drive bay and it's ready to use. Insert the M.2 drive and screw it in place using one of the smaller screws that was being used to hold the 2.5 inch drive tray, as you won't need that anymore. I'm using the ADATA XPG SX8200 Pro SSD which they sent over, and this was giving me 3.5 gigabytes per second read speed and 3.2 gigabytes per second write speed. Nice result. With the M.2 SSD installed, to get it working in Windows, you need to go to Computer Management, Disk Management, then initialize the disk and create a new volume, as I'm showing here. You could of course replace the default M.2 SSD with something better. You'll just either have to clone Windows or do a fresh installation. With the 2.5 inch drive tray removed, there's also now more space to upgrade the battery. My Legion 5 came with the smallest 60 watt hour battery, but you can also either buy it with 80 watt hour battery, or upgrade this yourself later. The Lenovo website site lists the battery part numbers that are compatible with the laptop. I'll leave a link to this page in the description. I found it difficult to buy the 80 watt hour battery as it was out of stock everywhere. I guess a lot of people seem to be doing this upgrade, but I'll leave a link in the description to the one I bought as well as other options. Now when I actually bought the battery, the company emailed me first to confirm my laptop model, which I think is pretty good customer service as it prevents me buying something that won't work. But that said, after I mentioned I had the Lenovo Legion 5, they told me that this battery would not be compatible. So I told them that the Lenovo website said this one should be fine, but they still didn't agree. In the end, I told them to just send it over, because even if it doesn't work, that would still be useful to report. But I'm pleased to report that it's been working perfectly fine. To get the smaller battery out, you need to first remove that 2.5 inch drive tray as shown earlier. Then there are three more Phillips head screws holding the battery in. One is hiding under the M.2 SSD that the laptop ships with, so you'll have to temporarily remove the SSD in order to remove the battery. I removed the battery cable from the laptop laptop by using my fingernails on both the left and right side of the cable at the same time and pulling. Putting the new 80 watt hour battery in is basically the same process in reverse. Connect the cable, put the battery in place, then screw the battery in. You'll need to use some of the screws that were holding the 2.5 inch drive tray in. Then finally, don't forget to put the M.2 SSD back in afterwards. The cables of the new battery were a little longer than the original battery. I just tried to push them down as much as possible, but it looks like you can also buy a shorter cable option. These are the battery life 
differences with the smaller 60 watt hour battery and the newer larger 80 watt hour battery. As we can see, there are some excellent improvements possible with the larger battery, which allows the Legion 5 to become one of the best results I've seen from this test, lasting for more than 10 hours in the YouTube playback test. Next up, we'll upgrade the RAM. Mine came with two 8 gig sticks for 16 gig and dual channel at DDR4 3200. You always want to have two sticks installed for dual channel, as this will give best performance. One stick will be slower. We could go to two 16 gig sticks for 32 gig and dual channel, but instead I'm going with two 32 gig sticks from AdData for 64 gig in total. So probably overkill for most people. When you're picking memory for this laptop, ideally just make sure you get two DDR4 3200 sticks the same size. Don't forget to stick the metal plate back over the memory, just look for the clips it sits into. I've just retested a few games with the 64 gig of memory installed to see what sort of a performance difference we're looking at. And in games there's basically no change, which makes sense, 16 gigabytes is still a good sweet spot for gaming that many titles are still fine with. In Adobe Photoshop tested with the Puget Systems benchmark though, we're looking at an 8% higher score with the 64 gig memory configuration. Adobe Premiere was also a little better with more memory, though just a 2% higher score this time, so not really a major change, at least in this test. Next we're going to upgrade the Wi-Fi card. Now the Legion 5 already comes with Wi-Fi 6 by default, which is pretty good, but Wi-Fi 6E did just come out, and this is a newer version that uses 6 GHz for increased bandwidth. But you're not actually going to get any improvements unless the access point you're connecting to also supports 6E. So this is kind of a pointless upgrade at the moment, but will be more useful in the future. To remove the Wi-Fi card, we need to take off the two antenna cables. But take note of which color goes where, as you need to put them back in the same position with the new card. The cables are fairly easy to pull off with your fingers. Take out the single Phillips head screw, then pull the Wi-Fi card out. Insert the new Wi-Fi card, screw it in place, and reattach the antenna cables in the same spots as before. If you're done here, you can screw the metal plate back on. After this, the Wi-Fi card was automatically recognized in Windows, and it connected to my network without issue. You could run a Windows update if in doubt to check for newer drivers, or download the latest from Intel directly, but mine just worked, at least I think. I don't have a 6E capable access point, so can't test the 6 GHz capabilities. I'm not going to cover thermal paste changes here, as I'm happy with the stock results. But if you do want to do this, all you need to do is unplug both of the fans from the motherboard, then unscrew the heatsink, pull it off, and clean off the existing paste. Anyway, that's basically it. We've now upgraded the Lenovo Legion 5 gaming laptop's battery, Wi-Fi, RAM, and storage, basically pushing this machine to the limits of what it's capable of. The increased memory didn't really help in games, but for content creator workloads, it was more useful. Extra SSD space, on the other hand, is always welcome, especially with how big games are getting. I'd suggest sticking to M.2 slots instead of the 2.5 inch drive bay, as this also gives you the option to upgrade to the larger battery, which as we saw, could greatly improve runtime. If you do want bulk space though, you could always install a 2.5 inch drive SSD or hard drive. Anyway, those are my upgrades for the Lenovo Legion 5 gaming laptop. If you want more information on this machine, you can check out my full review over here for all the details. I've also tested it in a bunch of different games and compared it with other laptops in this one. So I'll see you over in one of those videos. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe for future laptop videos like this one.